In essence, the wood burning stove is a chamber with a flue and a hole in the side. Fuel is placed in the chamber and it's set fire to, which means it burns, making hot gases which rise up the flue because the hot gases are less dense than ordinary air around. So cooler air rushes in, hot air or gases exit the flue and this circulation of air is what feeds the fire. And that's what's not working quite well enough. Now, I thought the hole in the side was comparable to those of wood burning stones I've seen elsewhere, but um, it wasn't good enough and I got to thinking a bit more about the flue and this process here. I had considered the flue before, but I considered the flue to be um, a vehicle for um, operating Bernoulli's law, which says that when uh, a gas blows across an open orifice, uh, an area of low pressure is created here, which means that gases rush in here, and that is a true effect. Um, but then I got back to thinking about this model, and I realised there's something else here. If we forget Bernoulli's law and forget uh, that there's any breeze there, the chimney will still draw, and the reason for that is that there's a body of hot gas in the flue, which is positively buoyant, or has negative weight, um, trying to go upwards, and um, when it tries to go upwards, there's a lower pressure underneath, and so this is what, what causes other gases to rush in. And it then occurred to me that the, the, the length of this flue is important, because if you make the flue longer, then you've got a larger volume of buoyant gas, which will be pulling harder, so there'll be a bigger rush of um, air into the flue, into the into the stove and then up the flue. So length is important. Who would have thought it? So this week we needed to make a test flue. It needed to be gas tight and fireproof, inexpensive and strong enough to do the job. We came up with a chicken wire frame which we formed over a drain pipe and then we wrapped it uh, helically with, um, with tin foil. Um, two layers of that in opposite directions. Each layer had a 50% overlap, so really four layers of aluminium foil. Those were held in place with fence wire, which was also used to anchor the flue to a stake, which was the thing that held it upright. Time for an anxious second test burn. So the fire's going really, really well. It's, I can't hold it, the camera here, it's too hot. I've been unable to visualise the secondary burners to see if they're working or not, but there is no smoke coming out the top of the flue. Occasionally you'll see a whisk, but mostly what you see is heat haze. Well that's fantastic news, so um, we set about fitting the um, secondary combustor properly this time rather than the lash up we had before. That started with adding these two tabs. Those tabs locate the secondary combustor just under the baffle uh, with two bolts which go through the sides of the, the stove. We made an external plate, quite difficult, this metal is not easy to work but it got better. The slant is intentional, it's because the baffle is not horizontal, it, it points up towards the door. So it's all coming together, now it was time to return to the problem of the air vent. Now we have the stove split into two at the moment, so we're looking at the back of the stove the yellow rectangle is showing where the vent hole will be when the front half of the stove is put back where it belongs. And you can see that this red metal plate cut from another piece of cylinder would normally cover that hole, um, but when you move the regulator it uncovers the hole uh, a bit at a time and that's how um, air will be admitted and controlled. Well that's it for episode 9, hope you can join us for episode 10, see you then.